and various states of development, because one of the big things at OWASP is, is being an incubator, a catalyst for research. And so you'll find some that are more developed. You could probably grab them, use them in your, your corporations, use them in your testing methodologies. You'll find others that are just in the incubation period. Those are great ones to get involved. If you see a project and you're like, this really you know, strikes a chord with me, send an email to the mailing list. That's how simple it is to get involved. The power of these projects is in the community and the volunteers that jump in. So if you see something interesting, please don't hesitate to get involved. The other really awesome element of OWASP, and again, I, think I'm, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir in some degree, but if you haven't heard these things, they're, they're great info, is the, the local chapters. And what's amazing is 198 chapters, and I think it's in, do we have the number, 140 countries or so? Yeah, and that's pretty amazing to have this, you know, grassroots organization, nonprofit. We couldn't sell you anything. Well, we sold you a ticket to this, but there's not much else we can sell you. And yet we're in 198 chapters around the world, 140 countries or more. That's a pretty amazing influence. So if you haven't been to your local chapter, do check it out. It's a great way to, you know, network with people around you. Uh, you know, take that internet of things, the way we're all online. I mean, there's a bunch of people that I meet uh, that I've talked to over email and IRC for years, never met in person. That's an awesome thing about an active chapter. You, uh, for a rarity, you get to actually see people uh, that you otherwise work with online all the time. The other interesting thing is the impact we can make when we want to send out information. We want to help you know, influence and move people forward. The mailing list that we have, over 36,000 individuals on those lists. And when you think about the application security community, you know, sometimes known as the community of 0% uh, unemployment, uh, that's a pretty amazing number. I, I haven't seen numbers on how big we think the, the, uh, the industry actually is, but I'm, I'm impressed that we have that much reach and we can really share these ideas, documents, projects, chapters to that many people um, with a lot of ease. And it's not just us you know, talking to each other and saying, hey, this is great, and you know, tap, you know, hitting each other on the back. Uh, government and industry citations ref regularly reference our materials. So if you're creating the next greatest guidance on a piece of information, that could find its way into you know, government regulation, uh, different regulations from industry, PCI. We're in a, a huge number of places. And what it speaks to is the fact that the material we're creating, people value that. They see it coming from the experts. They see the value in knowing that a variety of people have had their say in it. And it's not just you know, one person's opinion off in a corner, but it reflects the overall opinion of a variety of experts. So that's pretty amazing to have that impact there. The other ways that we have involvement at OWASP is through uh, academic supporters. So we try and build those ties with universities because fighting you know, application security, we could do it. We could do it through pen testing. Some would say that's one way. We could do it through developer training. But we could also go way back and say, let's try and attack this before you know, the next generation of developers. Let's go into universities and try and build the, the curriculums. Let's work with those groups to increase that communication so we can find out how can we as OWASP help you as a university build great developers, great security professionals with this information. And so far, we have over 100, organ uh, 100 academic supporters that believe in that cause and are helping through perhaps uh, providing meeting space, you know, building that relationship, having joint um, events, and more. Similarly, we also work, reach out to corporations, and right now we have 61 different corporate supporters. Those are corporations that both believe in the mission of OWASP, find value in our tools and documents, and want to help support the organization. Sarah's going to talk through some of the financials of OWASP, uh, but we run OWASP you know, on a shoestring. And, um, that's pretty amazing based on the impact we have in the number of volunteers. Some of our corporate members help support that through their donations. And then we get to the, to the meat of OWASP, which is the people and the community. Um, 1,900 members and more. And it's interesting, for those that um, are aware of um, public radio in the US, and there's probably a great correlation here in Europe, um, we don't, like I said, don't really have anything to sell you. So people that are members, they're just helping out because they believe in the mission they want to support through uh, 50 bucks a year. So it's pretty awesome to see this number of members, and we know that somewhere between 1,900 and 36,000 is the number of people that are actively involved, but it's great, again, to have supportive individuals that help, help support us financially as well. So I mentioned I was on the board of directors. Here's everyone else. So myself, Sebastian, Owen, Dave, Tom, and Jim. Uh, we actually have an election coming up that Sarah's going to talk about more. 
Uh, so some of those positions will be moving around. A lot of great candidates all running for positions. Um, and before I hand it to Sarah on those slides, I think I have a, maybe one more. Um, about the elections, I am super excited to see so many people running. You'll, you'll get the numbers from her, but the number of people running shows that we have a, you know, a mature organization where a lot of people are interested. We're going to have a good, a good transition into a new board, and that's really exciting. It's showing the maturity of OWASP, the growth of OWASP. You know, over 12 years, we've come a long way, and this is just a next, a next great step. So the last thing I'm going to talk about before turning it over, one of the things we've done on the board, one of the big things we did this year was create the executive director position that, that Sarah fills. And what that reflects, again, is the maturity and growth of OWASP. We've come to a point where the global board needs to be in a strategic, a strategic role to set you know, policy and direction moving forward. Having a volunteer board be in an operations role, trying to keep our hands into things on a less than full-time basis is not sustainable, not a good path forward. So one of the things we do as the board is set strategic direction, as you might expect. So in 2013, we set strategic goals that included four different items. And these are items that our operations team could focus on to help grow OWASP again to the next, next level. Uh, quickly, those four are volunteer engagement, uh, expanding communication channels, working on financial growth, and also focusing on OWASP project quality. So this time, I'll just hand it over to Sarah, who's going to finish this off with a handful of slides, giving you in insight into the operations of OWASP. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for hanging in there. I know some of this is interesting and some of it maybe is a bit too much detail. Um, for any of you that want more um, detail, we'll post the slides online. Michael and myself and a number of the other board members are around to fill in gaps or answer questions as well. So I wanted to point that out. Um, so. Um, I work with the rest of the operations team to make sure that the strategic goals and the operations of the organization um, keep running fluidly. And so I, what I want to do is talk just very briefly about the, each of the strategic goals that Michael mentioned and um, a few of the action items that we've been working on related to those. Um, the first of those is volunteer engagement and the um, one of the big things, changes this year, was the global initiatives. And what this is, is a, a place to request volunteer help, sign up as a volunteer, or if there's nothing that you see that we have posted that you're interested in, but you have a great idea, you can tell us what you want to do, and we'll help you find the right place to fit into our community. Um, so the additional... I'm going to just back up to this slide. The additional things we're working on um, are the expanding the communication channels, which includes um, we have something called the OWASP connector that we're sending out to all of our mailing lists, posting to our blog every two weeks, which has all the updated news on projects, events, um, governance, membership. Um, so I would encourage you to subscribe to any of the OWASP mailing lists, and you will get this every two weeks. Um, we also have um, numerous social media accounts, a blog, um, webinars, which we've moved from having um, more internal discussions to using those as a way to provide content to the community, training, um, and just talks by members of the community. Additionally, um, one thing that really houses our information is our blog, or not blog, our website. And one of the things we're going to be working on in the upcoming months is some website redesign, which for those of you that have been to our website probably think, well, it's about time. Um, so the other, quickly, the other items um, are um, focusing on project quality. And one of the things I just wanted to call out is, Simon, are you here? Simon Bennett is here, and he's going to be facilitating a project workshop tomorrow morning. So those of you that are interested in OWASP projects and want to get more information, um, I think that starts at 10? 9, 9, 9 bright and early. Um, so please, and on the 23rd floor, I believe. So please come if you're interested in that. Um, so jumping ahead, we have our slides got a little bit mixed up with this transition, but the WASPI awards. So every um, starting last year, we started having awards to um, 
members of the community. And I just wanted to call out that we have these different categories, best chapter leader, best project leader, community supporter, mission outreach, and innovator. And um, we have a number of people um, that are nominated for these awards. And I'm going to, because in the interest of time, and it's quite a long list, um, we will be sending out the link of candidates for everyone to take a look at, but you can tune in to our blog and the connector to see that soon. Um, the other thing that we've been working on is trying to communicate a little bit better about our finances. And so I just wanted to give a quick overview of our income sources from last year. And as you'll see, corporate membership is um, about 40%, which is so far um, our biggest category. And the second is global AppSec events, such as this. Um, we host one in Asia PAC, another in Latin America, um, one here in Europe, and another in the US every year. And these provide a large fundraising effort. So thank you all for coming. Um, and in, as you can see, there are several other categories here. Um, so foundation expenses, um, I've tried to group them into big categories, but as you can see, a majority of them are 44% are payroll, which considering our budget or our total expenses of the year are about $465,000, which is a pretty shoestring considering the size of the organization um, and being over 36,000 community members. Um, we have seven paid staff members. Um, which include myself. We have um, an operations director, Kate Hartman, and she's located in Maryland. Um, a project manager, Samantha Groves, and she is located in Arizona. Um, membership coordinator, Kelly San Lucia, and she is in um, New Jersey. Our bookkeeper, Allison, um, also located in Maryland. Um, a part-time IT support position is Matt Tassaro, and he's in Texas. And the newest member of our team is Laura Grau, and she's our event manager. Um, and these, this team really um, is what supports the scalability of OWASP. So these are the people that are checking in with the projects, the chapters, um, the conferences to help make sure all of this is running smoothly, bills get paid. Um, and so I encourage you all, if you have questions about specific areas or want to know more about getting engaged, to reach out to myself or any of them. So lastly, I just wanted to quickly go over um, the Global Board of Directors election. Um, so up until this point, we've had, we have six current members on the board, and the board had a meeting on Monday and decided to add an additional board position, bringing the total to seven. So. Um, um, this election will be electing four people, and here are the list of candidates. We have 17 candidates, which is an amazing amount of energy of people that want to get involved, shape the direction of OWASP. Um, these candidates are going to be posted on the website as well as their bios, with it, where they contribute to OWASP, and we will be um, doing some interviews, probably both written and some audio interviews with them in the upcoming weeks. So I encourage you all to stay tuned, and if you are not a paid member and want to vote in the election, um, our paid members are the people that vote. So the um, deadline to become a member if you want to vote is September 30th and then the election will take place in October. Um, last but not least, I wanted to say thank you to everyone for coming. Thank you for those of you that contribute um, and for just taking the time to help us with our mission. We're in person. We also um, can be contacted online on the website. Um, as well as you can email support at OWASP.org and with any questions you have and we'll make sure that the question gets to the right person and we hopefully will get back to you in a timely fashion. Thanks everyone and have a good rest of the conference.